Okay. Seem to be recording. This is good. Um, so in your lesson four folder, we're going to do a little more practice. So here's what I want you to do. Okay. I want you to open up a command prompt. <clears throat> And we're going to make a Lesson 4 folder for today. Now you can either do this through the command prompt with the make dir command or you can make that folder through your operating system in Finder or in Windows. Doesn't matter. So, so Lesson 4? Yep. So I'll just make a Lesson 4 folder through my operating system, through Windows, a blank Lesson 4. Now if you want to do this activity on your own, by all means go ahead. I'll walk through doing it. If you feel pretty comfortable, then all the instructions are here on Blackboard. Go ahead and try to get this running by yourself. I'll help you with the setup, but you guys can write some of the code actually. I can remove that. Don't need that. So at my command prompt, I'm going to go into my Lesson 4 folder, which I just created. It's empty. So how do we, what we want here is we want a new package.json file. We don't want to have to write it ourselves. So what would we do to get that package.json file generated? We did it last week in class. Presumably you did it in your lab. So we've done it twice. We'll do it for a third time now. What do we have to do? Thank you. So we're going to initialize Node Package Manager. And we'll get the prompts down below to, I'm just going to hit enter for all of these. Except I'll change my entry point instead of using index.js, we'll use server.js. Would you push enter? Oh, you pushed enter. Yeah, I've hit enter already a few times. So I'm going to change the entry point, name my initial file server.js. I'll leave git out for now. I'll add it, I'll push it up to git later. And I'll just say yes, that's a, a preview of my package.json file, which is fine. So, you. so now I've got this package.json file, which looks exactly like what you see in the command prompt. Now starting next week, we won't need to do this because when we use Express to build our applications, Express has a similar type of scaffold and it'll build package.json for us along with a whole bunch of other stuff. Is that something we gotta download on Express? Well, you download it, it's just, you download it, but you download it from NPM. Okay. So we actually can download it and install it right from here. So this is probably the last week we'll create our applications this way. Moving forward, we'll always start with Express and we'll let Express build an application framework for us. So all we should have here is our package.json file. So that was step one. We now want to make sure our application uses NodeMon so that as we're working and making changes, our application will automatically restart as we're testing it. We don't have to start and stop it every time. So how would we install the NodeMon package in here? npm install NodeMon. You got it. We did it, didn't we do it globally last time? You know what, actually, that's a good point. If we did a global install, you know what, Let's leave, we can leave this out. So. It doesn't matter, this will install it directly into here, it'll create a node modules folder. But you're right, Kaylee, we did install it globally last week, so NodeMon, we may be able to run it without. We'll see. I'm just curious, because it feels like every time we install it, it's creating new folders, taking up 
Yeah, that's that's a good point. We'll leave it out and we'll see if NodeMon will run because we installed it globally uh, last week. So we probably don't need to do that. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Wait, what would I have to take? Say I did this on a different computer last week. If you did it on a different computer, then you will want to run npm install nodemon. Because okay. if you're on a different computer, you don't have nodemon installed from last week. Yeah. We did install it globally last week, so I think that Kaylee, you're right. I don't think we need to install it so long as you're on the same machine as last week. Okay, so we've got package.json. Hopefully Nodemon is going to run. It's Let's go to the lesson three folder. Let's copy out our server.js file from last week. If you don't have it, I believe mine is on GitHub. If you go to my... Yeah, here's my file. So it's in comp 2106 lesson three. So you can grab the code from my server.js file if you need it. If you have your own server.js from lesson three, just copy it and let's dump it into lesson four. So we can try to run the application now. I'm just gonna open this up. But one thing we wanna do is it's not set to run NodeMon, it's not set to start using the NodeMon process right now. So if I start my application and then make changes, I'm gonna have to stop it. Where so, I... so where do we go, just a second, Scott, where do we go to tell the application to use NodeMon? Uh, scripts. Yes, so we're gonna have to go to the package.json. So I'll open my package.json. So in scripts where it says server.js, here we need to add nodemon in front of this. So server.js is our startup file but we want to use the nodemon module. We want to start it using that process so that it will be monitoring our file for changes. Without adding this, we can still run our server.js, but any changes we make to it won't automatically get re updated in the browser. How do we get, um, what's the new GitHub is it, uh, do want to hear it? The name is on Blackboard. Rather than me posting links every week, if you just go to my main GitHub page, it's right here. In Tools and Resources, there's my page. So then once you're in repositories, you'll always see the most current ones and just look for Comp 2106. So I'll put my files there every week. There's no need for me to post the link all the time. Just go to my main GitHub page. I'm sure you can find them because they're named descriptively. So now let's try and run the application. We should get what we got last week. So how do we get it launched from the command prompt? We gotta start the server. Brandon? How do you do uh, nodemon server.js? We could, or? NPM server, or NPM start. Yeah, if we just run NPM start, it will look for that main script and run it. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Now the error messages we get when we launch things, the, the error messages, the command prompt, they're generally quite long. Usually if you need to scroll up to the top and the error message is usually right at the beginning. What's our error message? What's the actual error? Why did this happen? Right, last week, so we installed NodeMon globally. So NodeMon works anywhere but last week we only installed the connect module inside of lesson three. Our application, if we look at our code on server.js, 
right? Our application is trying to link to the connect module. Well, we installed it last week. Here's my lesson three folder. So we, it cre we installed connect in node modules. There's our connect. In lesson four, we haven't done this. Right? There's no node modules folder. We don't have the connect library here. Did you install connect globally, possibly? No, because our well, our code is actually using connect. Right, so We're using this structure is using connect, right? Because app is using connect. So to fix this, we need to install. Or most of us, some of us like Vadim and McKenzie, you guys are special. Now we want to add the connect module into this project. Would it be worth it to do it locally? Probably not because not every application is going to use it. And in fact, this is probably the last week we'll install connect directly. From now on, we'll use express every week. Express uses connect. <laughs> so when we use install express, it automatically installs connect under the hood. We don't have to do it manually. So I'll install the connect module and it's warning us we've got no description, no git repo and no readme. But it installed our module and now if I go back to lesson four, node, the node modules folder has been created and the connect library has been downloaded from the NPM website. If it's running, it's finding connect some way, somehow. And I'm not smart enough to tell you how or why that is. I'm, I'm guessing it has to do with how you installed connect last week. No, it's not a problem. Potentially. So now I want to start our lesson four application again. Hopefully we don't get any other errors when we tried to run it before it started running and then it crashed well, as soon as it tried to find connect and we hadn't installed that package. So now if we run npm start again, okay, so our server's running. Now I'm not sure that we're using nodemon here because it's saying node server.js. So I think our application's running, but I don't think Nodemon is active. And we'll, we'll check that in a minute. So we should be able to load localhost 3000 slash hello, and that should bring up our hello world message we wrote last week. Right, so last week in my method, I sent some JSON back to the browser. We ran goodbye. So our, our application's now running again kind of as we left it last week. And if we call the tax calculator, so this is where our server.js was last week. Now I have a feeling Nodemon isn't running. If we want to check it, we can go into server.js and we can just make a small change in there. And if we make a small change in there and refresh, we'll see whether Nodemon restarts our application. I have a feeling it isn't because you're telling us it's the node process running, not Nodemon. So we'll go into server.js. I'll maybe go into my goodbye and put in an, uh, some additional text here. I'm just adding a bit of extra text on that response. Doesn't really matter what change we make as long as we make some change that should be visible. So all I've changed is line 26. So what do you think about how Nodemon is working with our application? I would suggest it's not because 
normally as soon as node mon mod sees a, cha a change that's saved, we would see it here. The, com the terminal would tell us that node mon found a change in this file and the application's restarting. We didn't see that message. And if I refresh, I'm still getting the old version. So my app hasn't restarted. So the only way now I can get it to restart, I'm gonna have to hit Control C to actually stop it. I'll say yes, I wanna terminate the server. Now we could try running it this way. I think we can do this. Because we installed NodeMon globally, I think, Varun, as you suggested, we could try with NodeMon server.js. Because we installed NodeMon globally, we could run our application this way. So now it's running with NodeMon. Now I should be able to make changes So I'll make another change to my goodbye function. And now NodeMon's restarted, right? Restarting due to changes. It runs server.js again. And now without stopping. So we have a couple different ways we can use NodeMon. If we install it globally, we have to run our application, start, launch our application with the NodeMon command. If we install NodeMon directly into one particular ap application then, and we change our package.json, then we can just use npm start to launch the application. So we can do it either way. Last week we installed NodeMon directly in Lesson 3 and we launched our application with the npm start command. This week we didn't install NodeMon directly into this application, it's global. So if we want to have it running, we've got to use the NodeMon process to kick our server off. Either one will work, we'll get the same result. Any questions so far? I know it's probably about time for us to take a break. Questions before we do? Okay, so I'm going to, we'll take a pause here.